Hi, so what I've got for you today, we are going to look at how to get a preset's name to show up on the GUI when you change preset. So let's add a GUI script. So this is an empty project, there's nothing in it. Um, so we're just starting from scratch. So let's add a preset browser, a floating tile, and content type set to preset browser. There we go. And we'll also add a control. Let's just add a slider. Uh, no, I don't want that inside the preset browser. Let's just get that to appear. There we go. So we have one knob and one preset browser. Let's add a new bank. Just call it bank one. In the bank, we will add a new category category one and then we will add a preset we'll call this preset one very imaginative okay so now let's move this knob all the way to the max value add another preset preset two and now if we switch between preset one and preset two we see the knob move with those uh, values there and let's set the knob to zero and we will add another preset and you've guessed what i'm going to call this gerald there we go so we've got one two and gerald now let's uh add a label to the interface so we have somewhere to show the preset name so i will add a label there we go make that a bit bigger i'm just going to move this over there Okay, so the preset name, we're going to get it to show up in this label. Now, one thing we need to do is turn off the save in preset uh, feature property. We need to turn that off. Okay. Now, there is a function in highs that grabs the name of the current preset. So, and that function is called get current preset name, I think. Let's just have a look in the API browser uh yeah get current user preset name so let's get the current user preset name and output it to the console down here so we'll do console dot print engine dot get current user preset name and if i Clear the console first. I'm going to hit compile. And it says the current preset is called Gerald. And that is good. We are selected on Gerald. So that is the name we see. Now I'm going to save this. Let's go to save as XML. I recommend you always save as an XML because saving with the normal save function, um, there's sometimes issues. So I always save as an XML. Sometimes I save as the normal one as well. Uh, we'll just call this project.xml. Uh, but I'll save it as the normal archive as well, which is what happens if you press Control S. There we go. That's saved. Okay, so I'm going to close highs. I'm going to reopen it. And I'm going to reopen the same XML file, project.xml. Now we'd expect when it loads up, we'd see Gerald appear in the console. So let's see what happens. Oh. We don't see anything, nothing appears. Okay, let's look at why that is. So when you load up a highs project or when you export it to a VST and you load up that VST in a door or another host, you um, the highs doesn't automatically load in any preset. It just is what it is. So it just starts with whatever the last values were that you saved it as or what the values were when you exported the uh, plugin it doesn't load a preset until you go to the preset browser and you tell it to load a preset so that means when we hit this bit of code here in the on init callback there is no preset name for it to display so that's why if I hit compile it's still blank because we haven't actually loaded a preset <coughs> excuse me so um, what we've got to do is we have to set up our instrument in its kind of default state. So um, 
let's let's start by just getting it so that when we select a preset the name appears in this label so let's get a reference to the label create script variable declaration there we go and what we need is when something happens after on in it has started we can load in the uh, name of the preset so the way highs works when you first load the instrument on in it this callback that we're in that triggers and then after that triggers it triggers all the callbacks for all of the controls on the interface so for example the the knob control as long as you haven't enabled anything with this processor id parameter id because if you're using this pr parameter id stuff then no callbacks are triggered in the script for that control so it's got to be a control that doesn't have parameter id or processor id set up so our knob doesn't have that set up so we're going to use the knob so let's right click on the knob create a custom callback and paste that in so let me show you what i mean if i put in console.print and hello world and we can get rid of this console.print we put in earlier and I'm just going to hit compile and even though I'm not moving the knob we should see the value appear down here in the uh, console so there we go hello world so that's because every control has its callback triggered automatically after the on init callback now if I turn off save in preset and hit compile it isn't triggered anymore so you've got to make sure the control that you're putting this code in has its save in preset property set to true or enabled in the uh, uh, property editor and if I compile we'll see hello world again so what we can do in here we can check to see if we've um, loaded a preset and if we have we can display its name in the label and if we haven't loaded a preset so we've just started the project from scratch like I have done here there won't be a name to display so we can set a default one so how do we check if there's a name to display well we can use that same function we had before engine.get user preset name so we can say if engine dot get current user preset name is empty so I'm just gonna put an empty string here that's the two quotation marks though anything in so if there's an empty string uh, we will set the name of the label to whatever we want it to be as our default preset which we've got set to Gerald so we will change the name of this label or change the value of the label so to change the value of the label we can do content dot get component and then in quotation marks we're going to put the name of the label so that's label one then outside of these brackets we're going to put a dot i'm going to call the set function and then i'm going to put text in there so we're setting the text comma and we're going to set the text to gerald so if no preset has been loaded it will default to gerald then we're going to put an else i want to copy this code here because what we're going to put is if there is a preset name then we want it to display the preset name so i can just copy this bit of code here engine.get current user preset and paste that in instead of gerald now if i've done all this correctly and i hit compile where it says label one here it should say gerald there we go gerald and now if i change preset this name will update preset one preset two back to gerald now if I select preset one and now I save the project or export it as a VST, the same thing happens. Let's close it. Let's reopen it. So I had it set to preset one when I saved. Let's open that. And look, it's back to Gerald in the text. And let's zoom in on that. Uh, there we go. So it's back to Gerald. So the reason for that is We've started it up, no preset is loaded by default because Highs doesn't know which preset to load by default. So it goes to our default value here, which is set to Gerald. And we could change that to anything we want. It doesn't have to be a preset name. It can just be absolutely anything, but this is our default. 
And uh, we can see that the value here, though, isn't Gerald's value, because Gerald's value is zero. So we're still loaded on preset one. So now we're on Gerald. So the important thing to remember is that before you save your project for the final time before you export it as a VST to give to your users, make sure that whatever preset you're setting the default name to here is the preset you've selected before you hit save. So because I've got Gerald showing here, I'm going to make sure I've selected Gerald in the preset browser. I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to save as XML. Or I could go to export and export as a VST standalone plugin or um, whatever other options I have in there. FX plugin, that's the other one. Um, and I'll save it as an archive just for the sake of doing that. So preset set to Gerald, preset browser, uh, pre preset name is set to Gerald up here. And now I'm going to save it. Now, notice that Gerald here is written lowercase just like the um, preset browser. So I'm going to change my little default thing up here to be lowercase as well just so it matches hit compile again that's updated okay let's save that one more time and we'll open it up one more time and it should be set to gerald and the knobs value should be zero because that's gerald's value there we go gerald knob value zero so that's really simple you don't have to put this code inside a knob just as long as it's it's in a control that has a callback. That means you haven't selected a processor ID uh, or parameter ID settings in the interface designer. So it's a control that has a callback and the control is set to save in preset enabled so that that control is triggered after on init has completed. So as long as those things are in place, they should work just fine. All right, guys. Uh, that's all I've got for you. I hope that was useful and I will see you next time.